Hello everyone, continuing the series of weekly contest 281. Here comes the third question of the list, which is construct strings with repeat limit. Here in this question, we are given an input string S and an integer limit that signifies the repeat limit. What we need to do, we need to construct a new string, repeated limited string using the characters of S such that no letter appears more than repeat limit times in a row. What we need to do, we need to return the lexicographically largest repeat limited string that is possible. Here they have provided us with few examples. I'll be walking you through these examples as well as the solution to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly move on to the PPT. Construct string with repeat limit, lead code 2182. It's a medium level question on lead code. However, after watching this video, you all will agree that this is an easy question. How? Let's get started. Let's take the same example that was specified in the question. The input string is given to us as double C Z A Z double C and the limit of characters that can at max stay together happens to be three. We want to generate the lexicographically largest string that could be generated out of this input data set. So let's get started. What that string would be? We have Z two times. So let's store the frequency of Z, which is two. Let's store the frequency of C, which is four. Let's store the frequency of A, which is one. Now what we will do, we will pull out the lexicographically largest character. Which one is that? Z is that character. And what is the frequency? The frequency happens to be two. So it's within the limit of the maximum repeat character, which is three. So what we will do, we'll simply add Z two times. Let's proceed ahead. The next character that we see happens to be C and C occurs four times. Four happens to be greater than the limit of characters that we can have, which is three. As a result of which we can't consume it fully. Therefore, we'll go and add C three times. The updated frequency of C get reduced by three. It gets updated to one, which is highlighted over here. Also in the previous step, I forgot telling that this would be updated to zero since we have consumed two Z's. Let's proceed ahead. Next, what we should do, we should fill the next upcoming character, which happens to be A and A happens to be a frequency one. So we'll simply go and add A to here and it, it's, its limit will get reduced by one since you have consumed it. So uh, the frequency of A gets reduced to zero. Now, finally, what is left? We only have a C with frequency one. So we'll go and update C in the last. The updated final string turns out to be this one, which is double Z three times C, A and C. Now comes the question, what all do we need out of this example? What have we analyzed? The first thing first, we need a frequency array for sure. So as to check what is the frequency of uh, the elements that exist in the input string. And while iterating, we have to keep track of the frequencies along with the iteration. So all of, all of you will agree that we definitely need a frequency array of size 26 because English dictionary has only 26 characters. Pretty awesome. What is the second takeaway out of this? The second takeaway out of this, we should have a mechanism through which we, we can identify the next lexicographically topmost priority element. Whenever priority comes into picture, there's only one way out, which is priority queues or max heaps. So we'll go and create max heap, which will tell us the next upcoming element that is to be used. If you have got the context with respect to frequency R and max heap, you have understood 70% of the algorithm. Now to conclude it further, let's take a slightly longer case. So here the input data set that is given to us is Z one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times we have Z or Z, whatever you want to call it. Then we have C four times. So C occurs four times, A occur one times. So first thing first, I've gone ahead, iterated through the input string and created my frequency map. Along with this, I also create a priority queue wherein the maximum value character would be retrieved first. So we have created a max priority queue or max heap, whatever you want to call it. By default, we'll simply go and add all the elements that are there in my input string into the priority queue. So all of them get added. 
सो वी हैव जी वी हैव सी एंड वी हैव ए एंड इन द सेम ऑर्डर दे इज यूल रिट्रीव सो फार नाउ लेट्स बिल्ड अप द आंसर स्ट्रिंग लेट्स स्टार्ट द आइट्रेशन वॉट आई एम गॉन डू आई पुल आउट द टॉप मोस्ट एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द प्रायरिटी क्यू विच वन इज द टॉप मोस्ट एलिमेंट ऑफ द प्रायरिटी क्यू इट इज जी सो जी गेट पुल्ड आउट दैट मीन्स वी नीड टू एड जी इन टू अर आंसर सेट and what is the frequency count in my frequency data set frequency count happens to be 7 oops we can't utilize all seven characters in single go because the limit happens to be 3 as a result of which i'll simply add z three times in my answer set so z gets added three times in my answer set the frequency of z gets reduced by 3 it gets updated to 4 and this element is gone from the priority queue since we have consumed it now comes the question what should i do next i should pull out another element from the priority queue which will give me the second highest lexicographically largest element which in this case happens to be c i'll be using its frequency only once so let's pull out c uh, c gets pulled out and what is the frequency of c the frequency of c is 4 uh, as a result of which we'll reduce the frequency by 1 and it gets updated to 3 along with this we will put z a c over here since we are consuming it and we will put back c and z back into the priority queue why because z was uh, also remaining of frequency 4 so z still remains of frequency 4 and c also remains of frequency 3 so both of them gets added back since both the values of frequency for z and c happens to be greater than 0 so far pretty good so right now we have built the answer string which is 3z z 3 times followed by a c let's proceed ahead let me just change the color of pen for the next iteration and we'll exactly follow the same steps now the priority queue still has three elements which is z c and a and again let's pull out the topmost element from the priority queue what will be the topmost element from the priority queue it will be again z so z gets pulled out what is the frequency the frequency count happens to be 4 which is greater than the limit value as a result of which we will consume z 3 times so z gets consumed 3 times and the frequency gets reduced to 1 since frequency is still there which is greater than 0 i i have to put it back into the priority queue just remember this point along with this we have to look out for the second highest element that exists in the priority queue what is the second highest element the second highest element happens to be c so c gets pulled out what is the frequency of c the frequency of c happens to be 4 we'll reduce it by 1 since we are going to consume it only once since it is acting as a filler so c gets added the frequency of c gets reduced to 2 and again since both the frequency of z and c happens to be greater than 0 we have to push them back so we deleted them first and again we will push them back so z gets added and c gets added back into the priority queue adding the, these elements back into the priority queue is an important step which most developers tend to forget let's proceed ahead next what do we see let me just change the color of pen for the third iteration and let's pull out the topmost element of the priority queue what is the topmost element from the priority queue it, it happens to be z so z gets pulled out what is the frequency of z the frequency of z happens to be 1 which is less than the limit pretty simple and straight forward let's consume this element so z gets consumed and the frequency get reduced to 0 this time we don't need to pull out the filler element the second highest element because the limit is within the upper bound that we have which is 3 let's proceed ahead next what we are going to do we look out for the highest element in the priority queue which happens to be 3 uh, which happens to be c so this gets pulled out what is the frequency of c the frequency of c happens to be 2 uh, it is within the limits so we will simply add c two times so c gets added two times and the frequency gets reduced to 0 that means we simply don't push this element back into the priority queue so this is also gone this is also gone finally what is left in the priority queue a is left in the priority queue we will pull it back what is the frequency of a the frequency of a is 1 you'll simply add it to your answer string and reduce the frequency to 0 since the frequency has been reduced to 0 you will not push it back into the priority queue and you are done with the iteration there is nothing present in the priority queue everything has been sorted out the final string is triple z c triple z c z double c a which is as expected 
to conclude it further i'll exactly follow the same steps as i have talked here and let's quickly move on to the coding section in the first go as i talked i have created the frequency array appropriately the size of the array happens to be 26 as i talked in the presentation moving ahead i have created a max heap which is a core concept the generic type of the priority queue happens to be pair the pair has two properties the first one is the key itself the second one is the value which represents the frequency pretty simple and straightforward no docket sign so far going ahead i have added all those elements into the max heap wherein the frequency happens to be greater than zero again no rocket signs moving ahead then i have created a variable for actually building my answer till the time my max heap size is greater than zero that means it's not yet empty i pull out the topmost element from the max heap so i have retrieved that pair i have retrieved the count the number of times that element is present in my input string i'll go and consume that highest element up till the repeat limit so i started a for loop i equals to zero i is less than repeat limit and count happens to be greater than zero if that is the case i keep on adding the character which is represented by pair dot key into my answer string along with that i simply reduce the count variable count represents the frequency when when i'm out of the loop either count has been reduced to zero or it has been consumed up till repeat limit now comes the interesting part in case i still have more elements in my count what do i do I need a filler item. What will be that filler item? The second highest pair. So I'll pull out the second highest pair. I append it or utilize it only once. I check if my frequency of the second highest element happens to be greater than zero. That means I have to add that element back into the priority queue because I have not consumed the second highest element fully. If it happens to be equal to one, that means I have consumed it fully because I have appended it to my answer set. So this is also very important, which most developers tend to forget. In the end, you need to simply add max heap dot add the whatever remaining frequency count is there of my first highest value uh, that is pair dot key adding a new pair into the max heap. So the crux of problem lies over here. Once I'm done with it, I simply return the answer string answer dot to string. Let's submit this up. Accept it. The time complexity of this approach happens to be order of n log n. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates on Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.